always delighted like when to see you in line. I just feel like when you come in line, I don't know, there's a different, like the, um, the, when, when the nuns were over at, uh, uh, nah, um, Oh, in the uh, Annunciation, the, not Annunciation. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sisters, the Marianites. The Marianites, yes, the Marianites of Holy Cross. When they were there, they used to come get coffee all the time. When I see you there, when I see you here. I don't know, there's, there's something about like the spectrum of coffee. That's oh, great. thank you. So, it's yes. a great place to come to. So <laughs> Father enjoy Jose, the coffee. Um, he's uh, the pastor of Blessed Silos, which is the big red brick building on Dauphine Street. That's correct, a beautiful um, church. Beautiful church. And uh, it's, it's absolutely, you know, it's in, in, um, one of the reasons I definitely would love to have you on the show is because um, the well, one of my previous episodes, I had uh, Jim Fitzmorris on. He's a playwright, mm -hmm. sure. and in his thing about like what it means to be a New Orleanian, you have to believe. Mm -hmm. And so he right. he says, you know, and of course he's a, a big Catholic and a New Orleanian, so of course he's like for him, you know, it's Catholicism. But you know, saints or the otherwise well, or whatever. But we got the, the football team, and we got plenty of real saints. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so that's. But you know, so for me, like I, I, you know, like a belief in in, in a supernatural um, is definitely the core of New Orleans. There's something yeah. here that, and like here we are, we're a city that has the cathedral. Like I don't know of any other American city that puts the church in the center. That's true. Of the it's like the square. landmark of the city. Yeah, I mean it's that. Yeah. And so, um, Silos is definitely like the landmark, the landmark of the Bible. Of the Bible right? I agree. Every picture, every Instagram post. You, you can know, see it from the river. It's a beautiful view. It's it's. Yeah. But, and and I am a parishioner there. You you married us mm -hmm. technically. That's correct. <laughs> and then uh, you also you baptized married my each son. Other. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. Um, and so like you know I'm a very uh, you know I try to be an active participant. You could you would probably argue I should be a more active participant. Well, in, I think we see you CLS. there regularly, so yeah. that's a great thing. And you have your business and your work, but yeah. uh, certainly there's always space for, for more. more. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, so people ask me all the time, like, what, what happens there? What, and it's like, it's a Catholic, and for me, it's like second nature, it's a Catholic church. But what would yeah. you say to somebody that was like, what, what goes on in well, Blessed I mean, Seals? every Catholic church is a community of faith. You talked about the importance of faith, mm -hmm. Kevin, and it's a place where people come to deepen their awareness of God in their lives, to celebrate the life uh, of uh, the community. And uh, typically we celebrate the life of the community through the sacraments. Mm -hmm. The most important one being the, uh, the Eucharist, which is the uh, celebration of the uh, Lord's mm -hmm. Supper, uh, which by the way, as we're getting closer and closer to Holy Week, by the time people hear this program, is, uh, Holy It'll Week Holy is here. Week. Yep. Yep. So, uh, on Holy Thursday, that's exactly what we celebrate. It's the Last Supper of the Lord. So we know that Jesus uh, of Nazareth, before he suffered on Good Friday, he spent that last meal with his disciples. So it's become memorialized in, in the Mass of the Church, which is called the Eucharist. That's the sacrament that we celebrate. Plus also we celebrate different moments in people's lives, like you just mentioned, you know, yeah. weddings, baptisms, uh, confirming young people into the faith, uh, and of course the sad moment of death, but we celebrate it in faith, knowing that in faith we believe in life eternal, so we celebrate funerals in the church as well. But besides the sacramental practices, you have all kinds of other activities. So oh, Holy yeah, Week yeah. is a great time to come because see. there are so oh, many things oh, that happen yeah, during let's Holy mention, Week. Let's so. mention that real, sure. let's put that, because this is one of the coolest things if you're that to bring true. people in. That I is mean, true. I mean, that's that's so interesting to see. Well, the main thing, obviously, we begin this Holy, Sunday. Uh -huh. This Sunday uh, is uh, Palm Sunday, which uh -huh. is the Passion of the Lord. So it's the entrance, uh, commemoration of the entrance of Jesus into the Holy City of Jerusalem. And that's, uh, people know it as Palm Sundays and people will identify because they've seen the palms around and yeah. we bring them into church, we have a procession uh, into the church and uh, there's the long reading uh, of the Passion of the Lord that Sunday. So it's the entrance into Jerusalem and the beginning of Holy Week with the Passion of the Lord. But then throughout the whole week, you were asking what happens at Silos. Uh, I'll give you a taste of, of Holy Week. After Sunday, Monday night, uh, there will be a holy hour, so uh -huh. this will be Monday of Holy Week. Uh, there will be a holy hour uh, that evening just to pray together. People will come in church to pray together as a community. Tuesday, we have in the morning in the cathedral what is called the Chrism Mass. So the Archbishop celebrates with all the priests the Chrism Mass where the oils are blessed. The oils are very important. Okay. So 
Yeah, it's no, the old... I've been a lifelong Catholic my whole life, and this is interesting to me. Because, I mean, I know Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but... No, the oils are blessed on Tuesday, and they are the oils for the sick, for baptisms, and for ordination. And it'll be used for the whole year. For the whole year. Okay. So that's a new oil being blessed. And uh, basically the most important uh, of the oils is obviously the one that is used during baptisms and ordinations. But there's one oil that is blessed Tuesday that is the oil of the sick. And that oil is spread throughout the whole archdiocese. So think about it. Every oil that is going to be used throughout the year is blessed on Tuesday morning. So they got gigantic jugs. No, they have a gigantic, and then (laughs) it's then taken to all the parishes. So every pastor brings part of that oil to their churches. And and then uh, what we'll do at our church, Tuesday night, we have a big anointing service. So anybody who's ill or going to have surgery or is uh, suffering from a debilitating illness, something that requires some uh, medical attention, they can come to church that evening at 7 p.m. Uh-huh. and then we have a communal anointing service. So all the people that want to come to be anointed, they can be anointed. Those who want to come to pray for those who are sick, they come and pray for the sick. And we have a beautiful celebration on Tuesday night uh, with the rite of anointing of the sick. In the past, that rite used to be called the extreme unction or the last rites. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. The and, anointing and people, of the sick is what I would... people thought, yeah, uh, anointing of the sick is the yeah. term now. Yeah, is uh, right? But uh, the, the reason of the change is that a lot of people felt that you were only anointed like minutes before you would die. Yeah. And that was what people were looking at. Was he anointed or was she anointed? And, and it's a sacrament of healing. I always say that no sacrament kills. Yeah. <laughs> Sacraments give life. Uh-huh. So uh, the church allows for that sacrament to be given several times. So it doesn't have to be one time. Actually, uh, it's interesting, I think uh, President Kennedy, one of our presidents, he he was anointed like seven times, and it's interesting, when he was shot, that's the only time he was not anointed. Oh. uh, Yeah. So, uh, but he had back problems, and, you know, he was several times uh, going into surgery for things that were serious. So, uh, anointing of the sick can be received several times in life. And if there's anybody who's sick or a debilitating illness or going to have surgery, they can come to the church on Uh Tuesday night. Then Wednesday, Wednesday night, we have a a, a prayer service that is around uh, the the Garden of Olives. The, the, The Gethsemane is the place where Jesus went to pray the night of the Last Supper. So we have a prayer service that kind of remembers and uh, meditates on what that experience was all about for Jesus. It's his lowest in the sense that he is, is getting ready to be crucified and, and he's struggling. That's the, uh, the experience of him telling the Father, if I can do this without having to endure the cross, please help me. So uh, we, we have that prayer service on Wednesday night and then on Thursday we begin the whole trinity. See, Thursday, I'm, I'm much more familiar yeah. with thir- Thursday. Thursday. Holy Thursday oh, yeah, is yeah. The, the night of the Lord's Supper. So it's a very festive time because washing it is of the feet and all washing that of the feet, the reading of the Gospel uh, of John when Jesus does that, and then the institution of the Eucharist and the institution of the priesthood. So that very night, Jesus uh, makes his disciples uh, that are with him at supper the first priests and they have the Eucharist for the first time. This is my body, this is my blood, and they celebrate that before he uh, suffers his uh, passion uh, on Friday. So we have a beautiful celebration on Thursday night. One of the nice things of Thursday night is that after the Mass of the Last Supper, we take the Blessed Sacrament out of the church into a smaller chapel where there's a beautiful altar that is prepared. A lot of people, Good Friday, they visit different altars uh-huh. around the city. Yeah, that's a, and that was, I'm, I'm sure my great-grandparents, that was a big thing that they were like, Yeah, it's a tradition. Tradition people. to walk from the different churches. That's right, the different churches that uh-huh. have the uh, Blessed Sacrament. And then we'll have a beautiful altar made in the, ch- in the chapel, the Daily the Mass chapel. chapel. And then basically since uh, on Good Friday there's no Mass, uh-huh. the Eucharist that is reserved from Holy Thursday is used for communion on Good Friday because there, it's the only day of the year that, that we don't have a Eucharist in, in remembrance of the death, of, the of, death Jesus. of Jesus. So uh, 
Friday, of course, is a huge day for us. Yeah, blessed Silos, you get Good Friday. When I was in, I actually was in the news before I got into coffee, and, uh -huh. and I would always send my photographers down to oh, Blessed Silos to get that. So it's a it's a carpet. It's colorful. It's gorgeous. It's like what. You yeah. can explain it. Well, I, the first thing we do early in the morning, actually, because they Because I have begin, no idea what it is. Well, they it's begin, gorgeous. Yeah, they it's... begin working like at 6 in the morning. Uh -huh. People, parishioners, uh, people that from the neighborhood, they're welcome to come. Uh, people come uh, I think we say like by 7.30, but early in the morning, the artists begin to paint on the floor, on the, on the parking outside, lot, outside the, parking the line. church. Uh -huh. They paint uh, the, uh, the outline for what the carpet is going to look like. It's a so carpet. Every, it's it a carpet like, uh -huh. of uh, wood, wood chillings. It's a... Uh, Stained wood? Yeah, it's yeah. like, how do you call it? Like the, uh, the, like the scrapes, of scrapes, or like the scrapes of wood. Uh -huh. And uh, we use also like uh, uh, coffee, grounded coffee, uh -huh. rice, any kind any of edible food, food that would offer color and then it looks like a carpet. It's all made it's, of those uh, products, but then it's all full of beautiful designs. Because if you do, it, you know, when you do in television and you want something that's Good Friday, but you want something that's visual, yeah. that's super, oh, it's a gorgeous, it's, it's uh, gorgeous. Place. It is absolutely and, amazing. And, and and it's done with the purpose that that is the uh, initial road for the living way of the cross. Okay. It, that's that one that of will my be that will you, be yeah. done that afternoon at four thirty. Okay. So the whole schedule, basically, we begin early on Good Friday. Uh -huh. The carpet is being done. Usually by 11 o'clock, it's ready for display. Okay. So people that, from the neighborhood, they can come by. And people are walking by. And that's yeah, one of the, you know, the interesting it. things about Silos, I believe, is that people walking by. When there's anything yeah. going on in the yard, man, see it, it. Like it draws. And the place. church is open, so people can see inside the see, church. A lot of people walk well, inside the it. church. And yeah. So basically, they can come and see the, part, the, the carpet, and then... Uh, we uh, have uh, actually that morning there is a, a soup and bread uh, 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 luncheon after after the carpet is finished, uh -huh. beginning at 11, 11.30. Anybody that comes can have a free meal. It's very simple. It's just bread and bread soup. soup. Very, very simple. But well, it's, it's a community meal. People come. So we eat together. And then uh, we begin uh, several moments of prayer. The, the strongest one begins at 3 which is the, uh, the offices, the service for Good Friday. So the service for Good Friday is the, uh, the, adoration, the, the prostration in the beginning, the reading of scripture of the passion of the Lord. You have the, uh, the veneration of the cross. Uh, a lot of people, oh. they, they think of that, that they want to kiss the cross. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. So they come for that. And, and then we have communion at the end of that service. Even though there is no Mass, but we bring the communion from the previous day. Gotcha. And people receive communion. And then what happens uh, around 4.30, so that service begins at 3. Around 4.30, we have uh, the living way of the cross around the neighborhood. Okay. So there are actors, oh, people that, parishioners that dress up as the characters of the Passion. And they go through the and neighborhood. And then we go through the whole neighborhood just walking uh, uh, singing and meditating so the way around, of the cross. That's after 4.30. 4.30. 4.30. 4.30. So if you're in Bywater, Yeah, you'll cool see it. Day. We're out in the streets and basically... You can't uh, miss it. You can't yeah, miss that. Yeah, we've had some very interesting experiences because the people in the neighborhood, they actually join in. Oh, yes. From, from people just following and, and joining the group well, to other people. I remember one year, uh, it, it was right around the station where Jesus falls oh, uh -huh. for the second time, I think. And... Uh, it's a pretty impressive fall because you know it's a very heavy cross, and uh -huh. we're right in the street, yeah. and uh, the Roman soldiers are flogging him to get up. Uh -huh. And I remember there was this guy coming out of a bar <laughs> on Good Friday. Oh he, yeah, well. he's coming up. You know, it's the neighborhood, so they were coming out. Well, maybe he gave they, up. Maybe he gave up alcohol for Lent and just Good Friday. Just good then. Uh, well, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But, <laughs> Is that but, a technicality? But you know, he came out of the bar right at the time they were flogging <laughs> Jesus. Oh, he so must have. So, no, he got into the whole act. He started saying, "Stop doing this. Why are you hitting this man? Stop uh -huh. it." <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, you know, there's acting going on. So. Yeah. 
right. he, this was not acting. He was being he was, real. He was, <laughs> and and, and he the was soldiers, confused. the soldiers had to keep going. So they had to put him aside. And, oh, and yeah. I remember <laughs> one of the soldiers coming to me afterwards saying, Father, did I do the right thing? I felt so bad because well, that guy was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the poor man coming out of the bar, he was that's, the only one that really had it together. That's, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, was, uh, he was an active participant. Exactly. So we have always, there's always something that happens. So it's interesting. There's that's, some great pictures. <laughs> you mentioned him sending photographers. We have some great pictures of uh, the living way of the cross. And then uh, we come back to the church after the... Uh, it takes a while. Uh, yeah. uh, it, it takes at least an hour the, and a half, maybe two hours go through the to whole. walk the neighborhood. Yeah. And um, if it's hot, it's... Uh, but, you know, you just, uh, yeah. you just do what you need to do. Yeah. Then we come back into the church, and then we finish the service in the church. It's very interesting because at the end of that service in the church, the actor that has played Jesus. He, he's crucified uh -huh. in the parking lot uh -huh. out in the yard by uh -huh. the fountain. And then they make a transition from his death where they take him through the sacristy and they wrap his body. So he's brought, the body of Jesus is brought into the church, into the church. and placed on the altar. So wow. at the end of that service, it's like people paying their last respects. So everybody goes through the altar and then we go home in That's silence, it. quiet. That's, That's it. it. That's the end of the day. Oh, okay. wow. So then the church is pretty quiet. Saturday, there's some preparations for the people that are going to be baptized or people receiving sacraments on Sunday. And uh, especially the Easter vigil, that's Saturday night at 8 p.m. Uh -huh. 8 p.m. That's the most important liturgy of the church. It's the resurrection mass, uh -huh. but it's the vigil. But we read uh, nine... It's when the sun goes down on... It has to be. The sun has the to sun be sets down. On so 8 p.m. We begin at 8 and the sun will be down by that time, and then there's the new fire. Uh, we go in to remember the light of Christ. Uh, there are long readings and a lot of readings, so we kind of go through the whole history of salvation from uh -huh. Genesis all the way to St. Paul proclaiming the resurrection and then the gospel of the resurrection. And uh, that's the night where those who have been preparing for baptism, they receive their sacraments, etc. So it's a liturgy that is focused mainly on the baptismal waters uh -huh. and the light of Christ. Uh -huh. So those are baptismal symbols. And of course, it's the first Easter Mass. So on yeah. Sunday, we'll have the Easter Masses for but, the day. But, but the Easter the, Vigil is like the, the big liturgy the big of the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and so I'm glad you ran through that with everyone because uh -huh. that's, I mean, those are super. And then, and then of course, y'all do it. Like I said, y'all do it more interesting than, like, say, my Catholic church when I was growing up, I feel like. Well, but, I mean, the liturgical the, the, movement, and the, the, it's, it's fostered that. It's, and, and I think it celebrate. has a lot to do with the fact that when you go to this church, and, and there's a, you've got so many different communities within this church. Uh -huh. um, you know, you've got the Spanish community, the deaf community. Um, so, like, when people are like, oh, who, it's go a very diverse, who goes to this church? It's a very diverse church, yeah. I've never, you know, like I've said, I've always, like, when I'm when my line is a diverse group of people here getting uh -huh. coffee, like, the church, man, when I'm in there and True. And, and I see this, you know, it's like, man, this is, like, for everyone, you know? Yes. And, and, I mean, when you're, you know, and I just kind of, like, see, like, you know, like, if Jesus were, like, giving you know, sermons on the mount or all the things that he that did. That is true. It would have been a diverse group of people that no would have showed up for that. It, no would, it about wasn't it. just the churchgoers in Or the mind. Jewish people, you know, uh, where Jesus lived in northern Israel, that would be Galilee, uh -huh. that was a highly diverse land. So where Jesus began his ministry, he was used to that. He was, he was used to diversity. Yeah, and it's yeah. and so I just, I don't know, and then that, and then that mixed with, you know, the, not mixed with, but that with the Catholic, with the straight old school Catholicism uh -huh, of, of, like sure. you just went through like it's so interesting yeah like, I mean it, and it visually the carpet the oh, stations of the plenty cross of experiences it's, so it's, it's a super big, cool it's a so big big week definitely so. check that out and and yeah. b before we go to I, I definitely want to like run through a little bit of your bio because okay, like sure. you know clearly you could from your accent you know we know you're not from here well so. I was born in Cuba okay raised in Cuba. Puerto Rico okay. yeah raised uh -huh. in Puerto Rico so I lived 19 years in Puerto Rico San Juan that's where I went to uh Elementary school, high school. So you school, don't remember Cuba then, too much? Yeah. No, I was just a year old when I left Cuba. I was okay. born there. Born there. But I then. left when I was a year old. So my parents left, uh, my whole family left at that time. And then uh, we settled a couple of years in Miami and then 19 years in Puerto Rico. <laughs> and then I did come here for college. So I, well, Georgia first and then LSU in Baton Rouge. Uh -huh. 
And then I went to seminary here in the city. So okay. I went to study Notre theology Dame. at Notre Dame Seminary. Okay. So I was there from 82 to 87. All right. And then uh, became a priest here in the archdiocese and uh, have worked in a few places. Uh, and you were uh, head of, I mean, you've, you've got a name for it, but you were head of the uh, of the. Uh, of Notre Dame for the a seminary. While. I was the president rector there for five years. Yeah, wow. And academic dean for nine. So I was there 15 years <laughs> total. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so for me, like coming to listen to you, I just, I'm, I'm always intrigued. You inspire me, like intellectually and no, like you. and and spiritually. You know, no, so no. I, you kind of like paint the picture. You uh -huh. know, very well. You can tell that. When you're speaking, you can tell like, whoa, this, this is, this is, this is not your. I don't want to say like not your average priest, but this is like you. Well, we try. We try to train them like yeah, that. Yeah, they are. So yeah, the yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> so that's bad to say. <laughs> no, that's okay. But uh, I mean, you know, you, yeah. you this, the stuff that you really bring, you know, a gospel reading into historical context. Sure. Plus that, it's, it's always well, I excellent. I appreciate that. I always, uh, you know, always look forward to your homilies. They're, they're oh, always, you. you know, awesome. So. Well, Definitely need to come check it out. Holy Week's coming up. All this cool stuff. Um, and, um, you know, so now you know what goes 30, on in that church. 3037 30, Dauphine. 3037 30, Right here Dauphine. in the neighborhood. This same can, rock. This, this is, is right same. here. So, yeah. you, so you can go to the church and come for coffee afterwards. It, a lot of people do that, actually. <laughs> I do. We see a I lot. do. <laughs> yeah. We see a lot of people yeah. after Mass in here uh, yeah. lined up. So it's That's super great. cool. That's great. Father Jose, thank you so much for coming in and, and sharing all this with us. I think there's thank always a mystique about you know, religion and yeah. stuff, and, and especially, like, with Bywater being such a bohemian, or it has the reputation True. of being such a bohemian neighborhood, that, like, that here's this big, like, batch, here's this big thing that is um, historically authentic to the neighborhood that's still very much alive today, that people can see, and, and that it's, it's, it's wonderful. Right. I love it. So, thank you for having all me. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Take care. You. All right.